So let's talk about how I became a virtual assistant with no prior experience. Now, if we're just meeting, my name is April and I've recently started this side hustle series that I believe will help people who are looking for different side hustles to do online and in the marketing place. So consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like these. So for me, I wanted to do something outside of teaching. It was fun and creative, but I really wanted to take um, advantage of the online world I had already been doing YouTube videos I knew about the space and I knew that there were ways in which I could actually work and get paid with the skills that I had already gotten and even used like for all my life since high school because you're trained with basic IT skills so anyways um I decided that I wanted to search for more options for different jobs that I can do. You're not really paid a lot as an, <laughs> as an English language assistant. So I wanted to do something other than private lessons. So I started searching. Um, I started searching online, on LinkedIn, on, um, well, mostly LinkedIn, but also Upwork. I applied for Upwork, but uh, they didn't accept me <laughs> and that is fine. But what helped me the most was telling people that this is something I wanted to do and eventually someone really close to me told me about an agency that was hiring virtual assistants even people with no experience well with skills but not really experienced with virtual assistant who could help to train us to get into the area and I really liked the values of the company how fair it was that you are paid based on your skill level and not where you're from um, so I applied and got accepted and got contracted to my first client but before I, I start talking about my experience with my first client some of the basic skills that you need with um, being in order to be a virtual assistant would be basic IT skills so understanding Microsoft understanding the different components in it or even just email management Google Workplace it's really big because it it is connected so much in what you can do and there are many things you can do online with the Google Workplace so knowing that is really having an edge um, understanding sales understanding customer service being good with communication great attention to detail details and of course there are other things that if you have more skills then of course you can do an extended range of tasks and even charge more whether as a freelancer or being a part of an agency having skills like these would really help you and help you to promote to promote yourself in whatever you want to do as a virtual assistant and that is exactly what I did I put on my resume things that I did that I know I knew would be really helpful as being a virtual assistant and um, that's what I did and I, I actually got contracted with this agency um, a few weeks afterwards thankfully I got my first client and oh my gosh it's been such a wonderful experience working with her now the clients that you get right it's like working with people you know you get some that fit with you some that don't some that are demanding some that aren't somewhere you can grow somewhere you don't really know if you're growing um, but with this client I really felt like she understood the area that I was in so I wanted to specify in the marketing and the digital marketing space which is something you can do with virtual assistant there are many things that you can do and you can actually specialize and being that I wanted to specialize in the digital marketing space I got contracted with a marketing agency and it has helped me so much to grow in understanding more about the digital space, social media marketing and the works. And for that reason, it's just been a joy and I'm so grateful being able to work with this um, company. So here are some of the main things that I do, right, in my specific area as being a virtual assistant. assistant. I do content scheduling, right? I do basic um, graphic design. I also do email management, research. I actually, I've done research in the past and I was able to use that skill in this area as well. So there are many things you can think about. But yeah, I'll do research for competitors or even demographic profiling for the target audience. And something that I would really um, 
suggest to people is that if this is an area that you want to go into, I've mentioned this a lot before, but think about the skills that you can um, bring into this area. Some of you may even say, and I've said this before, that, oh, I'm not good at sales and stuff. And you may think that because maybe you haven't had to speak to people directly about why a product is good or not, but have you told people why you are good for a job <laughs> or why you are the best for an area? You've done sales, but you just need to think about how to position yourself where this that you've done is actually great for this area, right? So for you to start in this area, definitely make it known that this is something that you want to do. Start cur curating your profiles to talk about this so that people can know and start thinking about, oh, you know, you want to do this thing. Ensure that you update your LinkedIn page, perhaps create a profile for Indeed, and then use the different social groups. You can use Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups in order to get connected to people that are within this field. Networking helps so much and it is like building relationships. Most of the time it won't be like a one and done or you know fast you know because with relationship building you have to offer something and then you know somebody wants to offer something back to you but it is worth it in the long run even for being an ESL teacher as I am right now perhaps don't stop teaching your private lessons overall unless you can you know or whatever else you're doing just you know um Continue step by step, you know, you get a client, you can lessen the hours you do in this area. Just, you know, be smart about how you do it. And if it's something you want to do full time, you you can definitely go all in. And if, if you are a freelancer and you're charging your own prices, then understand the industry rates and charge what's fair to you. Watch this other video about different side hustles that you can do as an ESL teacher or anyone really that's available online for you and thank you for watching i look forward to seeing you soon have a great day